Hey guys, it's me again. I've made a new open source script that you can use to paint patterns onto the surface of your 3D prints. It is usable directly from within Prusa Slicer, Orca Slicer and Bamboo Studio. This is built on top of my non-planar fuzzy skin script. Make sure to check it out if you haven't seen it yet and it sounds interesting to you. So what is it used for? You can use this script to paint any pattern onto your boring flat 3D prints and level them up to be fancy. Let's say you want this handle to look grippier, just paint the surface and look at the result. I have made some test prints to show some different patterns. It depends on the pattern, but some of them look really really good in my opinion. This idea is not new, but I think the approach to achieve it is. I will talk about better ways to make this later in the video. So let's look at how it works. The script takes your cheat code and post processes it. You can use a displacement map to choose your desired patterns. A displacement map is basically a grayscale image. We can then use the color information to generate a value of displacement at the given location. You can find many displacement maps on Google or if you want to create your own patterns, you can easily do that in any paint program. You just have to make sure that they are in PNG format because I suck at programming and haven't implemented different file formats yet. The script then displaces the generated cheat code based on the values the image provides. On top surfaces it does that non-planar and I'm actually surprised how well it works like this. Let's first go over some issues and limitations before we look at how to install it. This is a proof of concept so there are still many issues that need to be addressed. Doing a displacement directly to the cheat code is actually a pretty bad way to achieve this. The better way would be to apply the displacement onto the model surfaces. This is because a 3D model consists of faces. Each face knows its place in space because it consists of three or more vertex points which each have a x, y, z value. A so-called face also has a normal direction which describes where it's pointed at. This is essential for displacing the faces as we know in which direction we have to do so. When directly modifying the cheat code we don't have that information. We only know the start position of a line and the end position. With those positions we can calculate the direction where the printhead is moving and can then use it to figure out if we need to displace the y or x coordinates. We however have no idea whether that should happen in the minus direction or in the plus direction. For that we follow the print path and look back to check the angles between segments to figure out whether it made a left or right turn. If we print counterclockwise we can leave the displacement direction as it is when we last made a left turn but multiply it by minus 1 if it was a right turn. That's how we can figure out what's outside and what's inside. The problem here is that it only works on two dimensions. If you have an angled face we would need to have the knowledge of other layers. This results in the following currently unsolved problems. Curved surfaces sometimes switch between minus and plus displacement. Angled surfaces distort the displacement. Sometimes if an edge is rounded, the script uses the wrong displacement value. The wall adhesion is not great because it only displaces the outermost wall. If you want to look at the code and possibly fix any of the issues, you can do that on GitHub. The code is still a mess though because I couldn't bother refactoring it yet, so I'm sorry for that. I myself will keep working on it too, so it hopefully will eventually get better. For now let's look at some better ways to achieve the same results. Displacement maps are not a new thing. It's pretty common to use those in 3D modeling software like for example Blender. And this is by far the better way to do this. The Slicer Idea Maker has an option to do this in the Slicer directly. I don't know how they coded it, but I'm guessing it's applied to the model before slicing. Which would make things much easier. So if there are better options, why did I code this anyways? That's because I wanted to provide an easy solution for people who don't have any experience in 3D software. And a solution that is usable from directly within the slicer. Another big advantage of doing it after slicing is that we can make the top surfaces non-planar for better looking results. Before we look at the installation of the script, let's see how you can do it in Blender real quick. I will not go over much details, if you are new to Blender, look up some beginner tutorials. In Blender add a cube. Go into edit mode and subdivide it a couple of times, so that we have enough faces to displace. Now unwrap it with U Smart UV Project. 
You can switch back to object mode and go to the modifiers tab and add a displacement modifier. Add a new texture and switch the coordinates to UV. Now in the texture tab open your image. The displacement is too much, so back in the modifiers tab you can increase the mid-level to 1 and decrease the strength to 0.01. The resolution is pretty bad, so I will quickly subdivide it again. That looks better. Now let's decrease the size of the map in the texture tab. If you want to make it look even better, you can now add a subdivision modifier. Now make sure to check the Apply Modifiers option when exporting, and that's it. Now that we have that covered, let's look at how you can install the script and use it yourself. You need to make sure that you have Python installed. If not, you can download it from python.org, the link is in the description. Now to run the script we need to know the location of Python. For that open your command window by pressing Windows and R and type cmd. Then type var python and you will get your path. Now go to my github page and download the fussificator python script and put it wherever you want. The page is also linked in the description. Download any displacement map and put it in the same directory as your script and name it input.png so that it can get detected by the script. In Prusa slicer go to print settings and then output options and then first put your path to python into the post processing scripts text box and add quotation marks. After that put the path to your script in quotation marks too. Now add minus run1 and minus displacement map input.png. Now you need to go to the printout settings and add a new extruder in the general tab. Go to the custom g-code tab and add semicolon fuzzy tool to the tool change g-code text box. You need to write it exactly like that for it to work. And you shall only use it with a single extruder machine, as the script currently is hardcoded to tool 0 and tool 1. Now back on the plate, open the material painting and select your second color to paint the sections where you want the pattern to appear. Hit slice and save the file. To see the result you can drag the sliced file back into the slicer. Now let's look at Orca slicer. In Orca Slicer go to the Autos tab and scroll down and there you can add the same as in Prusa Slicer into the post processing script text box. First of all if you use a Bamboo Lab printer with Orca Slicer follow the instructions for Bamboo Studio but in Orca Slicer. For every other printer go to the edit icon of your printer. Then go to the Multimaterial tab and increase the number of extruders to 2. Now go to the machine g-code and add semicolon fuzzy tool to the change filament g-code text box. We can now proceed with painting the model. Make sure to use the second color to define where the pattern will be. And if you slice and save the g-code you can drag it back into the slicer to view it. In Bamboo Studio it's in the same place as in Orca Slicer, simply add the path to Python and the script with the two parameters. Now comes the sketchy part. We have to make a couple of changes here for it to work. First make sure that you have two filaments. Now hit the edit icon on the first filament, go to advanced and add semicolon non fuzzy filament right at the start of the start G code. And at the end of the start G code add semicolon non fuzzy filament EOS. Then go to the filament end G code and add semicolon non fuzzy filament end at the start of it. And add semicolon non fuzzy filament end EOS to the end of it. Now save it as a new filament copy. Go ahead and edit the second filament. We need to do the same here. 
add semicolon fuzzy filament at the start of the filament start G code and semicolon fuzzy filament EOS at the end of the start G code. Then add semicolon fuzzy filament end to the start of the filament NG code and at the end of it add semicolon fuzzy filament and EOS. Let's save it too. Now one last thing to do is go to the printer edit icon and then to machine G code. Scroll down to the change filament G code section and then add semicolon fuzzy tool at the start of it and semicolon fuzzy tool end at the end of it. Now you can paint your model as usually and hit slice. That's it for the installation. So what now? I will make sure to keep working on this and my fuzzy skin script so that we can hopefully get the complete fuzzy skin overhaul. In the meantime, between my last video and now, Prusa Slicer released Paint on Fuzzy Skin which is a great step forward. And also means that my last video was kind of useless because I implemented that too. But that's how life goes sometimes and I'm happy that it's in the slicer now. I'm sure Orca Slicer and Bamboo Studio will follow soon. As for the non-planar stuff, I hope that that finds its way into the slicer soon. I'm working on it and I will also add the displacement functionality, but because I'm working full time, it will take a while to do so. Now the only thing left to say is thank you so much for your support. Exactly one year ago, we hit 1000 subscribers and look at where we are now. This has been a great journey so far, so thank you so much for watching and if you liked the video, you can support my algorithm with a like and a comment. And if you want to see more interesting 3D printing stuff, make sure to subscribe. Now I wish you a Merry Christmas and make sure to spend some quality time with your loved ones and not only with your 3D printer. See you next time, goodbye!